You're listening to The Screen Team on 930 KWOC. Are you okay? I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. To infinity and beyond! Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Please, what does it always mean? This is Junior. That's his name. Henry Jones Junior. Like Indiana. We named the dog Indiana. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. I am your father. My mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Bond. James Bond. And now the screen team on News Radio 930 KWOC. And welcome to a very, very special edition of the screen team here on today's talk 930 KWOC and also 93.3 on your FM dial. It's an hour long show and we're paying tribute to Robin Williams. We're going to be having all, pretty much all the members of the screen team kind of given um, uh, their memories of, of Robin Williams and some of their favorite movies. So, uh, Get ready, man. We're going to have some some laughs, some tears, and uh, kind of some uh, memories of our favorite uh, Robin Williams films. And with our first segment, we've got Laura and Sabrina. How are we doing today, guys? We're good. Doing good. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. Um, Robin Williams, of course, uh, he passed away uh, last month. Uh, very, very sad, uh, you know, tragic uh, loss, and uh, we're paying tribute to him uh, today. Uh, let's first start off with uh, memories. What are some of your favorite uh, Robin Williams memories, Sabrina? I saw him doing stand-up comedy on HBO when I was a kid. With the comic relief stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, just, uh, and more, I guess. I mean, I saw just like Robin Williams shows, you know, like back in the day, you didn't all just, you didn't just get to do it on demand. <laughs> so <laughs> Right. You couldn't um, find it like there wasn't classic a, ones on YouTube or there anything. There wasn't even a comedy channel yet. Yeah. You know, it was literally <laughs> HBO. <laughs> right. Um, so I remember... You know, being a young, impressionable girl watching this crazy man on stage running around, and he was just sweating and sweating and just, and, then, and this stuff was spewing from his mouth, and it was so funny and it was so fast that you just, you had to hope you could catch the show again later on so you could catch the jokes that you missed because right. you were laughing. <laughs> and the man just never stopped. And um, it was just, it was mind boggling because he was, at a time we were coming off the Richard Pryor kind of scene, you know, where mm-hmm. everything was just vulgar and grotesque wow. and just, just you and know, dark. Richard Pryor style, which I'm totally not dissing the man because he was funny. But it's a different style of funny with Robin Williams. You had to be smart enough to follow what he was making He's fun clever. of. clever. Yeah. Very clever. And, you know, at 12, 13 years old, I wasn't necessarily smart enough, so... <laughs> But I, he was still funny, and he just he had this um, this appearance on stage. So that was my first exposure, and then he did Mork and Mindy, and so I know not know. Or well, I, yeah, then he did Mork and Mindy, and so then then you got this. Whoa, there's Mork, and then there's this crazy man on stage, and they weren't the same by any means. So that was sort of like, oh, they can do both. <laughs> I didn't know comedians could be actors, and so yeah. So, Laura, what are your, some of your early memories of Robin Williams? Our favorite memories, I should say. Gosh, he just has so many great quotes. I know he was really amazing with Ad Lib. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, his movies, when you go back and just remember the stuff that he says, it just sticks in your mind. Like, I can, like, off the top of my head, just like, Toodaloo! And, you know, I mean, what's that from? <laughs> I don't know. Doubtfire. Exactly. Oh, See, okay. You, <laughs> you say, I mean, it's something as simple as that. If said by somebody else, you might not have remembered it as well. Right. Because it was done, Robin Williams. Yeah. It completely just, I mean, it just sinks into your brain. And, you know, he's done so many different genres of movies and stuff. You know, like, um, I mean, he's done everything. Of course, the cartoon voices to a guy that, in, you know, in Mrs. Doubtfire, he plays a guy that does, does cartoon, cartoon voices. voices. Yeah. Which was, which you know, funny. a little ironic. But yeah. I just, um, I've always enjoyed him. And I mean, um, even when he played some of his darker roles, which, as it turned out, seemed, you know, maybe that was more what he was really like right. as a person. But um, he made it so many people laugh. And I just remember thinking as a kid, you know, oh, my gosh, I wish I could be that funny. 
you know, and I'm pretty close, but, but <laughs> he's more she's, famous she than is. I am. You're pretty close. Uh, I'm going to tell a quick story, and then we'll get into our review of Aladdin. Um, when uh, when Robin passed away, I was doing some research, or just you know, finding some more information on him. And and uh, there's a story: him and Christopher Reeves uh, were were big friends. Uh, they went to Juilliard together, and uh, you know, uh, did a lot of acting acting together and stuff like that. Well, when Chris had his accident and um, you know was paralyzed and stuff like that. He was going in uh, for his surgery, and he was depressed, 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 depressed. And when he's getting ready to go into surgery, Robin Williams comes in with a doctor's uh, outfit on. He's like, okay, you're ready for your colonoscopy here, Mr. Reeves, you know, and just kind of <laughs> buttered it up and made it funny. And he's, Christopher said that was the first time he laughed since the accident. Uh-huh. Wow. And I wish somebody could have done that for, for Robin because uh, apparently he was in the early stages of, of Parkinson's. So. So let's kind of get on to uh, to a happier note. We're going to review the Disney movie Aladdin, and uh, this movie is uh, is awesome. I remember seeing it when I was 12 years old, and uh, just a classic Disney film, classic Robin Williams film, and probably one of the best um, animated voices of all time, I, I would have to say, uh, just because a lot of the stuff that he did was ad-libbed. Yeah. You know, they, they were just like, okay, here's the general premise, go with it. And he did, and that's what made the movie probably why it's so good. Yes. I'm pretty sure they had to animate the movie to go with what he said. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And this was before they were putting the dots and green suits on them and catching their emotions. I mean, they managed to do that just visually. They they weren't tracking his movements, and yet Genie still came across as a whole lot of Robin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's. I can't imagine that being anyone else. There's... (laughs) <laughs> and, and and basically, uh, for the I mean, pretty much everybody has seen Aladdin. But for those who haven't, this is based on the uh, Aladdin, the Forty Thieves. Uh-huh. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, fairy tale, I guess it. I guess the word yes. is. Yes. And uh, basically, you have Aladdin. He's uh, kind of a doubt and out kind of guy or whatever, and he finds this magic lamp, touches it, rubs it, if you will, and uh, the genie pops out and makes all his dreams come true. But there's this bad guy. His name's Jafar, and he's he wants that lamp too. Yes. yes. He wants to control the genie. Everybody wants to control the genie. And all the genie wants is to be set free. He wants to be free. Freedom. So what made this <laughs> genie come to life, besides the rubbing of the lamp, truly was Robin Williams. Yeah. He took a character that many people had heard about as a kid that had no personality whatsoever. It's just genie. Right. You know. I make your wish come and true. Disney kind of got thing. a hold of it, and Robin Williams, the combination of the two, just... Blew up the big screen, uh, blew up the VHS industry because everybody had to have it, and yeah. you know it's yeah. like wow, this is this is something I have to watch again and again and again, and and so glad that it is a movie that I want to see again and again and again. Do you guys have any favorite lines from from the movie that the genie did? Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> I like okay, so this is sort of like an insight. Like if you take the the video, and you take it to where the genie and the tiger are on the trail. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> man. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. This is a family show. You, you'll, have to, you'll have to look that up online. There is like one of those little Easter egg thingies you that know, I still, you can't prove that it's really being done, but it sure sounds like it. it it's, anyway. It, it doesn't, all right? Yeah, you, whatever. You're like, listen, it doesn't. <laughs> Everybody's going to be going home going, what's she talking about? Tigers on the terrace. All right, so anyway, like, uh, he says, be yourself, you know, and, and just... Those kinds of things, you can tell those are Robin Williams coming across just doing his, his improvisational stuff. Um, the song that he sings, you know that's scripted, but I I don't know if he had his foot in that one or not, but right. it is so clever and so right up his alley. And, and the man could just tear it up. It's, it's just, it's mind-blowing. I can't even... I I always hear "Be Yourself." That's the first thing I think of yeah. when I hear Aladdin. I like when he's doing the impressions of Jack Nicholson and Ronnie. Yes, Danger. I can't believe it. I'm losing to a rug. Yeah, yeah <laughs> all of that stuff. Uh, Laura, do you have any favorite parts in the movie? I can't remember the exact quote, but when he's talking about his, I mean, what he goes through as a genie, he's like all power, master of the universe. <laughs> Eat me, <in> space. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> interpretation of the dialogue such a key thing for him yeah he really could sell it and yeah. he did he wasn't afraid to be small voiced and then he could just be like raw, raw, you know and it right. just carried so well yeah. i mean i the man could have done anything he wanted to do in this world and and been entertaining 
I appropriate just, as needed. <laughs> I think that it would have been amazing to have seen him actually do in the studio for that movie. Oh, yeah. You know, because, I mean, he I can just imagine him with his flamboyant gestures. Bouncing you know, and off all the this walls. Thing. Yes, yes. Because he does all these... He used to do this little thing with his head, and he'd, like, tuck his neck in. And, you know, you can't see it because on the radio, but, you know. <laughs> I think it's uh, important to say that this uh, film was probably, like, one of those first Disney films that was, uh, like, even before Pixar came in. It was, like, one of those first just Disney films that was funny for kids, enjoyable for kids, and enjoyable for adults, too. Right. You it was I mean? the rebirth of Disney along that line. And that was one of the movies that helped... Yeah. Little Mermaid, into, yes. Aladdin, and Beauty and the merchandising, of course, yeah. and yeah. everything. And I was really glad that that Robin stayed with that character. Well, at first he didn't. There the was the second one he didn't, but the third one he was he back came on. Back. Yeah, yeah. I, there was some sort of falling out with Disney or whatever, and they fixed it up for the third one. So nobody does it like him. Nobody does it like him. We'll have more of the Robin Williams special coming up after the break. Uh, Sabrina, Laura, thank you for being a part of the show. Thank and you, uh, coming up, we'll be back with our review of Popeye. That's next on today's talk, 930 KWOC.